Twin Lift Project Design Specification. This is my BTEC final year project, building a scale model of a twin lift. Normally, if a building requires four lifts, there has to be shaft space for four lifts. But with a twin lift, you can have four lifts in the space of just two. In each shaft, the two lifts run separately. They are not a double deck lift. They run completely independently of each other while sharing the shaft space between the two lifts. The aim of a twin lift is to move passengers as seamlessly as a normal lift. Both lifts serve all floors, but there is a holding area at the top and bottom of the shaft to allow one lift to move out of the way of the other lift to allow the other one to serve all floors. Advantages of a twin lift. Firstly, it halves the amount of space used in a building for lift shafts. This is especially important in London where building space is at a premium. Also, it gets passengers to their floor quickly and efficiently. It saves money as both lifts share the same running tracks, position counting tape and outer doors. And most of all, it is a futuristic piece of technology. How passengers choose their floor. Unlike a normal lift, passengers choose their floor before entering the lift. This enables the system to choose the best lift for passengers and manage the twin lift system as efficiently as possible. The scale model. There will be a Raspberry Pi which controls the whole of the scale model. Then there will be an Android on each floor which communicates to the Raspberry Pi when the passenger chooses their floor. In the shaft there are two lifts running independently and the motors are at the top. Also there is a holding area for one of the lifts to go in. This is what the interface is like on the Androids. Firstly, touch the screen to start. Then when user touches the screen, where do you want to go? User chooses their floor, then it sends a TCP message to the Raspberry Pi, except I had a problem with TCP messages, and the final model is going to use HTTP messages. But anyway, when the Android receives a message back from the Raspberry Pi, it will then tell the passenger which lift to get in, either the left hand lift or the right hand lift. And after five seconds, it returns back to touch the screen to start. Then, when the lift arrives at the floor, the Android will receive a message from the Raspberry Pi saying it's now time to to get in the lift. TCP between the Raspberry Pi and the Androids. The Raspberry Pi communicates with the Androids using the TCP protocol, except it doesn't, as I had a problem with TCP protocol, which I'll come on to later. I'm actually using HTTP protocol. There will be a Wi Fi network, especially just for the twin lift, to enable communication between the Androids and Raspberry Pi. They'll communicate using short messages of text. The first letter in each message defines what the message is for. The A messages. The A messages are sent from the Raspberry Pi to the Androids, server to client. This type of message is to tell the Android to display text on the screen. This is an example of an A message. The first letter is the letter A. Obviously, the second letter is the floor which the message is for. The third letter indicates the colour of the screen with the message. The next letter indicates what sound should be played with the message. So like a voice saying take left hand lift or like a ding or something like that. The next letter indicates the arrow which should be displayed to accompany the message, either left, right or no arrow. Then the rest of the message is the text to be displayed. So if the message was like this example, A211L, Take the left hand lift. The result will be on the Android a blue background with a left pointing arrow and a message saying take the left hand lift. The B messages. These are sent from the Raspberry Pi to the Androids again, server to client. This type of message is to tell the Androids what floors the lifts are on. So this is an example of a B message. When it says touch the screen to start, it also shows what floors the lifts are on. And the message will look like B is the first letter, then left upper, left lower, right upper, and right lower. The C messages. These messages are sent from the Androids to the Raspberry Pi, client to server. This type of message is sent from the Androids to tell the Raspberry Pi a passenger has requested a lift. This is what a C message looks like. First letter is the letter C, then the floor the passenger is on, then the floor the passenger wants to go to. Once the Raspberry Pi receives a C message, he has to choose whether left or right hand lift, then send an A message back to the Android. And also, one other type of message, since I'm using HTTP protocol rather than TCP, which I initially thought I was when I made this PowerPoint, the Raspberry Pi can't just simply communicate to the Androids. Because of the way HTTP works, it can only communicate back as a response to a request. It can't just send a message at any old time. So because of this, there's also a D message. A D message does absolutely nothing. It's sent from the Androids to the Raspberry Pi to enable the Raspberry Pi to send a message back whenever it wants to. Anyway, and now on to how the variables work. There are variables for the lift course inside and outside 
outside of the lift. So if you look at the variables, each set of variables is done as an array. Each array on each floor is either true or false, or ever has a call there. So let's demonstrate how the arrays work. A passenger arrives at the ground floor and they touch the screen to start. Then they choose their floor. I select the floor on the Android and the Android sends a C message to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi responds with an A message to tell the passenger to take the left hand lift. In the ground floor left array, the second position of that array has now became true. This is to say the passenger on the ground floor waiting on the left hand side. Then the lift will come. When the lift comes, as the left lower car arrives first, the two transfers from the ground floor left array into the left lower car's array. This is to say the passenger in the lift wanting to go to the second floor. Then the lift goes to the second floor. Then the two in the array goes false because that's now complete and the passenger gets out of the lift. That's how the arrays work. Now on to the floor allocation variables. The floor allocation variables control how the lifts reserve a position in the shaft. So for each lift there are two variables. One of these variables is the display variable. This shows the lift's actual position to show where the lift is to say what floor it's on. The other variable is the logic variable which is called the reserve variable. This this variable is used to logically show where the lift is going and there's a very important difference between the two because the logic variable at all times says where the lift is for the purpose of what is going on. It doesn't need to literally count up as the lift goes up in the shaft and also the logic variable reserves the shaft space as the lift moves. The twin lift directional system. The direction variable is the direction the lift is wanting to travel but Unlike a normal lift where each lift has its own direction up or down, the twin lift has one direction variable between the upper and lower car. So this means that the upper and lower car's direction can either be up, down or split. In up mode both lifts are going up, in down mode both lifts are going down, in split mode the upper car is going up and the lower car is going down. But at no point can the twin lift ever have the upper car going down while the lower car is going up. That is simply not allowed. Summary of all the variables. This is a list of all of the main variables for running the twin lift. So there's all of the arrays for left and right on each floor. There's the arrays inside the lift to say what active calls there are in the lifts. Then there's the left upper display, left upper floor, left upper move, controls the movement of the lift car, left upper floor timer, which controls how much time it's going to spend on each floor. Then the same for the left lower. Then there's the left system direction, which is either up, down or split. Then all of that again for the right hand lifts. Lift Direction Changer Control With the twin lift system, both lifts have to work together and share the shaft space. The direction control is a fundamental concept which makes the system work. This manages when which lift can go where within the shaft system. There are six algorithms to control this. Let's take a look at these algorithms. The algorithms have to overall work in a way which obey the rules. The rules are, at no point can the lower cards be set to go upwards when the upper cards set to go downwards. Both lifts have to serve their floors which may overlap while taking consideration of the other lift. When the lower car has active calls above the current floor and the system is set to up, the upper car must give way. When the upper car has active calls below its current floor and the system is set to down, then the lower car has to give way. Lifts may only change direction when they have permission. When a lift wants to change direction, it must request permission from the system. The permissions, and this is a very important part of how the concept works behind the twin lift. The upper car is going up and the system is set to both going up. The upper car does not have permission to change direction, but the upper car must give way to the lower car. Next, the upper car is going up and the system is set to split. The upper car may go down by setting the system to down, to both going down as this will not affect the other lift. Then, next one, the upper car is going down and the system is set to both going down. The upper car may go up by setting the system to split as this won't affect the other lift but as well as that the upper car must set the system back to split again in this circumstance while setting it as down the lower car is unable to change direction to up so that means the upper car has to change not just can change direction to split but it has to then again we've got the same three permissions but for the lower car and it works the other way down so the lower car is going to up and the system is set to both going up the lower car can go down by setting the system to split as this won't affect the other lift but again if the lower car is going up because both lifts are going up then the lower car must change to split when it's finished it will give the upper car a chance 
starts the venter system down so the upper car can go down. Then next one, the lower car is going down and the system is set to split. The lower car may go up by setting the system to both going up as this one affects the other lift. Next one, the lower car is going down and the system is set to both going down. The lower car does not have permission to change direction to up because this will affect the other lift. But the lower car must give way to the upper car. So it must go downwards and possibly even into its holding area to allow the upper car to serve its floor since the upper car is going down in that circumstance. The algorithms. There are six algorithms to control the twin lift. There's the lift movement algorithm, the left right shoes and the four lift control algorithms. The lift movement algorithm. This is quite straightforward. It simply controls the lift. It's just like a bog standard lift algorithm. It gets the floor open, doors, closed doors, except my scale model doesn't actually have doors. But it's basically just the concept of how it works. Move the floor, it's just how a lift works. I'm not going to go into detail about this because it's no different to any other lift really. It's just the algorithm that controls the lift movement. Next algorithm, the left or right chooser. This is when the Raspberry Pi receives a C message when a passenger has chosen the floor. This algorithm has to choose whether the passenger is sent to the left lift or the right lift by doing a lot of complicated calculations. I'll come back to this algorithm later in another video. But what's most important about this video is the four lift control algorithms. These four lift control algorithms control what the lifts do when they are ready to depart. So once the passengers have finished getting in and out of the lift at the floor, the lift's now ready to depart. What does the lift do? The four lift control algorithms are upper car going up, upper car going down, lower car going up, lower car going down. And the lifts don't get to choose when they're going up and down, because when they go up and down, that's based on whether the system is set to up, split or down. So that's control which way they're going. Now it's down to a lift to choose whereabouts it should go within the whole system. Remembering, I have to share the shaft space equally and give weight if the permissions say they should do so. Changing direction when finished. I said about this earlier on. When a lift has finished surfing its floors and the lower car is going up, Upwards, or the upper car is going downwards because in both of those situations they'll be blocking the other lift because remember if the upper car is going downwards the lower car can't go upwards because it doesn't have permission to change direction so the upper car has to go upwards by setting the system back to split to give the lower car the opportunity to then set the system to upwards so remember this has to work seamlessly to allow the lifts to serve their floors equally so this is a summary of direction changes so there's two separate codes running in parallel to achieve this so the upper car is ready to depart if the system is up or split that is fine it looks for floors above its current floor that's quite easy but if the system is set to down if a core has been found go to floor wait for the time on that floor then go back round again but if a core has not been found if the system is set to up if the upper car is going up the system set up then can't do anything but it has to give way if the upper car is going up and the direction set to split then the upper car can now change the direction to down so it can look for cores below Low its current floor. But if the system set to down, meaning the upper car's going down, and if it gets to this point it hasn't found a call, and the system set to down, the upper car's going down, the upper car must now immediately change the system back to split to allow the lower car to have a chance to serve all of its shaft space. And exactly the same is going on parallel at the exact same time with the lower car. While these two systems are going on in parallel, it should enable the shaft space to be served equally. This also means when there's no calls, the system will keep changing direction. So if there's no calls on either, anywhere within the system, say it's set to up, then the say system sets up, then the lower car will change it to split, then the upper car changes it to down, then there's obviously still no calls, the upper car has to change it immediately back to split, but the lower car will then change it to up. This means when there's no passengers about, the system will be going up, split, down, split, split up, split down, split up. This enables both lifts to have a random sort of chance when a passenger eventually comes. And finally, we have the four main algorithms in detail. So this first one is the upper car ready to depart upwards algorithm. So the upper car is ready to depart the floor time as time now is now ready to go. Are there any calls on the current floor? If there are, then it has to stay on the current floor, obviously. So next up, F is set to the current floor. Now in this little bit here, it's looking for calls above the current floor in ascending order. So if it's on floor three, it'll be looking at four, five, six, it's in ascending order. And it's looking for calls either outside of a lift, heading upwards, or active calls in the lift. And it's doing this in ascending order. It's not yet looking for calls outside of the lift heading downwards. 
So if it finds a call, it then sends a lift back floor. If it doesn't find any of those calls, and now F is now the top floor, and it hasn't found any calls in this section, the next thing it does is, does the lower car want to go to the top floor? As if the system sets up and the lower car is going upwards, then the upper car has to give way by going to the holding area. If it doesn't, then the next thing it does is look for calls in descending order from the top floor back to the floor the lift's currently on, and it's looking for calls outside of the lift heading downwards. Or if the lower car wants to come up, then it has to go one floor above the lower car. If it finds a call, then it goes to that floor, obviously. If it still hasn't managed to find a call, then it changes direction. Remember, the direction changing system. So, the upper car's going upwards. If the system is set to up, then the upper car cannot change direction, because that will affect the lower car. If the system is set to split, then the upper car will then change the direction to downwards. So, the upper car's going down, and that will not affect the lower car. Next algorithm, upper car ready to depart downwards. Now this is similar, the only difference is if the lower car is in the way, then the upper car will wait for it to get out of the way because the lower car has to give way to the upper car in this situation. Again, first thing it does is look for calls in the way it's going, so it says it's going downwards, it looks for calls in descending order, of course going down, and it doesn't find any, then it looks for calls heading upwards. Then, once it's done that, as the upper car is ready to depart downwards, if it hasn't found any calls, it then has to amend immediately change the direction back to split to allow the lower car the opportunity to set a direction to up so the lower car can go upwards. Now is the lower car ready to depart downwards algorithm. This is very similar in design to the upper car ready to depart upwards algorithm. It's almost identical apart from that it's in reverse since it's the lower car. Remember on a lower car ready to depart downwards algorithm the lower car has to give way to the upper car. Now, the lower car ready to depart upwards algorithm, and this is very similar to the upper car ready to depart downwards algorithm. And that is the end of my PowerPoint.